okay so about uh, the last uh, step the authentication is uh, that we are still missing uh, of course we could do something we can make something up with the knowledge that we have about forms about states and so on uh, but we see that the, co the authentication problem is uh, uh, not so easy to solve because there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of details okay so um, we are not uh, talking uh, explicitly about the security of the application of the that, that those will be uh, further problems we are just talking about uh, at least the, the basic mechanisms for uh, ensuring that a given user uh, is using the application the web application in a way that is uh, you know the, the um, authorized by the application itself and first of all we need to distinguish between two terms that are similar but uh, different meanings one is the authentication and the other is the authorization authentication uh, relates to the moment in which the website recognizes you so or the other way around you convince the website that you are really that person okay usually you are providing some credentials for example in the in the easiest case the username and password and the website will check it and at, in that moment the website will will let you in basically will recognize you okay um, and this just for telling different persons apart okay my it's my login versus is your login and the website will Pre, uh, present uh, different information according according to the person uh, after I, re I recognize you after you authenticate the user uh, I need to authorize or not the uh, next actions that you do so I for every next action that you are doing so you are requiring to see a list of items you are requiring to delete an item you are requiring to whatever so imagine your uh, web API uh, the web server should not just blindly trust any request okay with the technology that we have uh, up to now with the, our exercises everybody who knows uh, um, where to call an api may add or delete or modify whatever it wants without any control okay so we need to add a layer uh, where the different apis uh, we only respond if the user is authorized to use them and uh, authorization means that the user first had uh, was authenticated so there is no authorization without prior authentica uh, authentication but the authentication only comes once okay let's call it the login time uh, when you do the login the system recognizes you and then uh, the authorization must be checked at every request every request every time you're making a call it will check okay you are this user that authenticated before are you allowed to do this operation mm, the first layer would be are you an authenticated user or not so i will author authorize you or i will block you because you are not uh, provided any identity but even if you provided some identity maybe some operations are allowed only if you are i don't know an administrator other operations are allowed only if you are a power users and um, other operations are allowed only if you are a guest or uh, or other levels or so so for every operation that you are requiring uh, depending on the user information that you provided during authentication uh, i will allow or deny uh, the execution of this action okay so first of all we have the authentication at the of the of a of a session of navigation and then at every call that you are making you need to authorize this specific call by checking user information with the permissions that are should be granted for that uh, operation and this is a tricky uh, a tricky business um, because it's complicated to get everything right uh, and it's very easy to make some errors or mistakes and just forget some step and that will create uh, uh, security holes uh, uh, in our application where everybody will just uh, you know um, uh, be able to execute operation that sh they shouldn't be allowed to basically and uh, it's also tricky because uh, it needs to uh, work on the server side and the client side uh, they should be aligned uh, about uh, who is the current user and whether he's uh, authenticated or not and uh, and there's a, there are a lot of uh, pitfalls in that uh, so 
uh, this message is basically saying don't uh, invent your own mechanisms uh, let's try to use some best practices some libraries some advices that are you know already being standardized uh, and we try to follow the, the the best practices for for authentication okay it's a very very complex problem uh, the more you dig the more you find uh, about uh, details and the complexities and so on so let's not try to to solve it by hand basically so i tried here to uh, just make a, a a quick view of uh, of the layers uh, in, at which the authorization uh, needs to work uh, of this uh, authentication and, and authorization stuff needs to work okay so from the user point of view uh, what we need is just uh, that the application okay is providing uh, three different functionalities i have a, a mechanism for logging in a mechanism for logging out and uh, uh, the user may navigate through different pages uh, components or routes or whatever uh, on the front end so this is what the user sees, actually. Okay, the user perception of, a, of an application is that okay, uh, there's a login button. I can enter my information, and after that, I can navigate through the pages uh, that will have my information on them. Okay, we are uh, let's say forgetting about one step, which is actually not so relevant, which is a sign up. So creating a new user. Hmm? That will be that's not uh, much more complex than the others uh, because it's just adding some information once you have authenticated. But uh, we are not dealing with this sign up process uh, here in our projects. Uh, we assume that it can be done separately. So we assume that we already have the users. Uh, maybe we we will enter users by hand into the database. Okay. So this is the uh, user view. So for providing this user view, what is the React application going to do? Well, uh, first of all, the React application should uh, uh, know whether the user is logged or not. Okay, at every time I must have some information whether, okay, right now in this session is the user logged in, and so I should provide all the information or not, and so I should hide some components, not display them, and so on. And if the user is logged in, who is it? Huh? The information about the user basically the name or the permissions uh, or the level and so on so this information of course uh, it will be stored in some internal variables of the application into the state of a component and this state probably should be propagated through a context uh, that is able to teleport this information to all the components that need it because maybe there is a a component deeply nested that will render the the user icon in top right in the top right corner and needs this information about the user and we don't want to pass the properties all the way through so in many cases the component that is managing the state of the of the of the user of the login user of the logging state of the user uh, will also be a context provider so that every other component in the application will know that but this is just a normal let's say state inside uh, the react application and this state variable you need to have a life cycle that we must manage uh, this variable must be set the first time when the login uh, happens let's say whether only the login is successful okay if the login failed of course we don't set any user information we don't set uh, the logged in state of the of the session and they will must be destroyed also when I ask it to log out so that the, the front end application knows that uh, that session, that user is no longer the, the currently connected one. And during navigation, you must query and use this information. Now, this is the easiest part because actually you are, it just means using this state variable whenever you need that in your component. Okay, you have this information. The key part is uh, uh, the login part from the React application. The key, uh, say, um, activity is uh, um, ensuring a, a proper login process. And the login means that requiring information from the user, sending it to the server, and checking whether the server authenticates that. Okay. And so we'll have some uh, um, a route at the server side. I'm jumping to the server side, and then I fill the middle. Uh, a route for uh, the login action which is the most important one for authenticating a session. 
uh, that will perform the, the actual authentication uh, so it will check the, if the credential of the users that are provided by some login form hmm, so we have some, some login form somewhere in, in our front-end application the information provided by the login form is the correct one so we'll check the username and password and tell me whether they are okay or not hmm? and this happens at login time and uh, after the authentication is successful we should be able to uh, authorize all the future information so this uh, uh, authentication information must be remembered okay until i log out the application should remember that i already logged in so remembering the information is easy from the for the front end because we have a state dedicated to remember that information it's much more complex for the server because let's remember the server is just uh, uh, http is a stateless uh, protocol so after this authentication after the server knows that you are uh, authenticated and your password was correct uh, it will immediately forget this information okay when you are re when you are creating the http response uh, all this information is lost uh, and in the next call you you will just appear as an as another different uh, anonymous user okay so uh, we need to do extra work for also ensuring that the server will remember uh, this information and this means uh, uh, setting up a so-called uh, session on the server side. A session is a mechanism for the server to remember uh, information about the client. Okay, we cannot just trust uh, the application that say, okay, I have a state that will tell uh, I'm a good guy, so trust me. No, the server should remember that it validates. Uh, it, it, it has just validated the um, the login and so it can trust uh, that specific client uh, with uh, uh, with um, making new extra calls okay and so we have some extra say stuff extra technologies that, that uh, uh, between the browser and the server uh, exchange some information about the session okay the server should remember the session and this session data is information which is created at the login time so at login i'm creating some information an object in practically an object in javascript that will remember which is the user id that of the user that just logged in and then i must remember this information uh, for the next calls so when the, that user will do a get api or a post api i i can check whether this user is authorized to do that operation this information should be remembered into the server and basically into the server we have a so-called session storage which is actually a, a variable where we can store different information and this information is separated by sessions so it's, it's uh, if you have 20 different users using your website each one of them has their own separate individual storage for storing the information about the session in practice we are uh, associating maybe the username the level of authorization and so on and storing that into the session data and this session storage only works uh, uh, thanks to the collaboration of the browser and the server basically that works through through session cookies okay so we have a lot of other st of extra stuff basically uh, handling the session storage handling some session cookies and so on just for allowing the server to remember session information this session information that we just did so it's extra work which is only due to the fact that http is a stateless protocol and the server doesn't remember by default what you did in the previous call this is basic http technology but gets in the middle of doing our own uh, authorization and then of course uh, uh, with uh, this uh, information is also checked on the database that will we need a table in the database with some user and password information and so on once we do this the rest is practically easier because at every new call so when the react application is calling a new api 
uh, of course uh, uh, the the server application will need to check whether you you the the user currently authenticated in the current navigation session whether he or she is authorized to call this uh, HTTP API and if yes then execute the API otherwise return an error saying okay you are not authorized for this okay so this will basically check the information that is already inside the session and that is this is why we need to remember this information after the login so I do the login now and in all this next calls uh, I will check this information that I set into the I created and stored at the login time I will check it at every next call for authorizing them okay uh, and of course all of this uh, uh, will need to query the the database uh, at the login time we'll uh, need basically to check uh, the password and the user table and on the normal API calls uh, we just uh, use uh, uh, say we may use some information about uh, the the logged in user but mainly we are using the other tables of the, of the database uh, basically imagine your our react scores example uh, where we I, I can show the scores of different users okay and depending on the, the logged in user so I don't see your scores you don't see mine and uh, basically in the query that will select which exam scores I'm be showing uh, I use the information about the ID of the current user and I will only show and then the only return in the get API I will only return the information about that specific user the user will not be a parameter of the API because I cannot decide whose user I want to to see the results I can only see the result of the user that is currently logged in and so uh, this information will be taken from the login session so there's a lot of details here, okay, uh, going from the, I say, application logic, so uh, which are the queries that they need to do, they take into account for the user and how to use them in the components, but there's really a lot of in infrastructure in between for ensuring uh, this communication between clients and server. So I try to do this, uh, you know, uh, general table and uh, uh, now we'll try to break it down in different pieces and see practically how, how we can approach it okay so first of all let's get rid of the boring part uh, which is uh, how to make uh, http sections work um, and try to give some memory back to http which is uh, by default uh, uh, totally stateless okay um, so the idea is that in a given the user as different pages you know, uh, navigates uh, to different pages uh, we, we don't care whether they are really different HTTP requests or are just different routes in our application uh, what we know is that uh, at a given point the user enters some information let's say X and uh, some pages later we uh, use uh, this information X okay and uh, uh, the server after a few HTTP calls uh, must remember some information that was entered before in a context where there may be many users uh, uh, using the same uh, information so basically the the server must first remember distinguish the different users tell tell them apart if there are 10 users uh, it should be able to track from which users uh, uh, is it user number one or user number seven so in this case i am going to use the value of x uh, of one or X of seven so first uh, recognizing who you are I don't need to know your name I then but I just need to tell the different current, uh, concurrent users apart from each other and then store some information which is specific for each user okay um, this is what we want to achieve so we want to achieve what we normally call a navigation session no? a session which basically uh, um, a set of uh, interactions uh, that shares uh, some common information okay uh, and will exchange some messages with this uh, where this information is remembered until the end of the session basically and so this shared information about what we are doing should be stored somewhere we know it will be easy to store it on the on the client because it's just a, you know, a react state 
but you cannot trust the, the client because everybody could uh, say develop their own react application and just send information fake information to the server and the server cannot trust that okay so the server uh, the, the the state of the interaction must be held inside the server basically so the server must have this uh, some information about this shared state so that we can trust uh, uh, next uh, uh, interaction. So uh, we don't want another user uh, at this point, user number 99, which is a bad guy, uh, try to send a request to the same server telling me, give me X, give me X. And because I am the same guy as number one, no, we don't want this to happen. Okay, so the server must be able to tell a valid request from number one from a, a wrong request that is not coming from number one and so give or not give the, the correct data uh, this mechanism is based actually on uh, uh, the generation of an id that identifies uh, every session okay so we have the browser and the server that will agree uh, on a number of an id a difficult, a hard to guess number uh, for um, for recognizing each other. Okay, just remember the server is only one, but the browser may be many different users uh, uh, that are uh, connected to the same time uh, at the same website. Okay, so each of them will have a different uh, session identifier, which is uh, say a number, okay, a string. And uh, uh, this number should be shared in a way by the server and the uh, and the browser. So the browser will have only one ID, so the one session ID. Store we store it somewhere, and uh, the and we see how and where. While the server will have many IDs: ID for user number one, session ID for user number two, session ID for user number three, and so on, hmm? because it has uh, many concurrent users. Um, the server, when it receives a request, doesn't know from which client is this request coming. Okay, so I say, okay, this is a request, but does it relate to the session number one, two, three, or I don't know, unless the request itself has a, a copy of the ID attached. So then the browser needs to send a copy of the session ID every time it makes a request to the server so the server can unlock this uh, ID and say, okay, this is the one. It's what I called ID number two. And then there is some associated information about the username, about uh, the group, about the permission, whatever information I need to have about this user. Okay, we'll have, I will have also other information about uh, session one, other information about session three, but I'm not using them. I'm only using uh, information uh, related to the session that matches the ID that they just received from the browser. Sorry for the long sentence. Okay. So the server will store session information related to all the current session. The browser will remember the ID of the session. Okay. Now we understand why these IDs should be hard to guess because another uh, browser B prime should not be able to guess my ID, my session ID. Otherwise, it will be able to impersonate me and uh, uh, send request to the server telling it that they are the wrong person. Okay. Um, so this is information that should be kept secret between the browser and the server, and uh, the browser uh, will. Uh, send this copy of information at every new request after this information has been created by the server okay in order for the server to trust these ids they should be created by the server all this this is just a string which is stored inside a cookie which is a basic uh, basic http header uh, when uh, we can set a cookie in the response when when we res respond to in every in every http uh, response we can set cookie we have, have a set cookie header that will just set some piece of information 
and the browser will promise to send it back at every new request so it will add a new header in the request automatically this is done automatically by the browser okay we don't need to do anything to ensure that the cookies are exchanged correctly between the client and the server um, <coughs> sorry uh, but we need to know that there is this number that will is able to let's say unlock some information which is stored on a per session basis hmm? This is also valid if the user is not authenticated. It doesn't matter. It's just a basic mechanism at the HTTP level. Okay. Then we will exploit this information for uh, authentication, basically, or basically more for authorization. Okay. So this ID is stored into these cookies, uh, and cookies are, as I mentioned, uh, exchange through spe special um, HTTP headers and maybe may store some information which is generated by the server stored in the browser and then given back to the server the browser usually doesn't need to see the content of the cookie it's just a favor that the browser is doing to the server okay i'm giving you this information so that you can give it to me in back in, in a later time because I have a very short memory. So you can you browser can help my memory server. And the complexity is that because I am trusting, you know, it's like uh, I I give you my wallet, uh, okay, uh, because you can give it back to me when I need it. Okay, but I need to trust that you will give me uh, the wallet back and you will not modify the content of the wallet, okay. Um, and so the complexity comes from the fact that the server is uh, forced to store some information in the browser, but at the same time cannot trust the browser with that information. Hmm? A lot of the complexity ca comes from this. Okay? Let's blame it on HTTP that was invented in a stateful way. <coughs> Cookies are just uh, <coughs> very simple values that have a name attribute. Uh, we see them from, as, from JavaScript, we see them as objects who have a name and a value attributes. So the name could be session ID, for example. We can set different cookies, uh, for example, the preferred language, the preferred, uh, uh, I don't know, dark on, or, 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 um, or light theme in the interface or whatever. We are now concerned with the session cookies for authentication, so maybe we call them session ID. And we assign them a value which is uh, as random and as difficult and hard to guess as possible. Hmm. There are some other options. Uh, one is whether the cookie is secure. It means that it can only be exchanged over TPS. It's not our case because we are not dealing with the certificate, but usually it should be the good choice only to use HTTPS for exchange information. And uh, an important uh, uh, attribute is this HTTP only. That means that this cookie will be used by the browser and the browser only. So uh, it will be impossible to read and write a cookie from your JavaScript code. So this is an attribute that the server writes, sends when it creates the cookie and tells the browser, browser, I'm giving you this cookie, but please don't show it to the JavaScript code that you are running. Only use it, browser, inside your HTTP engine, where it's supposed to be. So this is a, an extra security measure because the JavaScript code should not be should not need, let's say, to, to have this information because uh, it's a server-generated information that is useful for the server. The browser is just a middleman in this in this uh, in this operation. So uh, the, our JavaScript code will never, on the client, will never need uh, to see uh, any of this information. Hmm? So it's a good uh, attribute to use in this case. And of course, it may have some expiration data or so on. So the Authorization phase uh, based on cookies uh, uh, can work in this way. The, you imagine a login time, okay? At the login time, you have the browser. In some way, inside the browser, we have the information, the credential of the user, username, password that we gather from a login form, for example, okay? Username, password, submit, login. The browser collects this information and makes a POST request with this information. This is a normal POST API. 
that we can send to the server. It's with the normal HTTP API mechanism, we make a fetch that contains this payload with the user and password. The server receives this, the information, checks whether the password is correct, let's assume it is correct, and if it is correct, it does two steps. One, it will create a session ID, the server, and will encapsulate that in the cookie that, we, that will be sent back to the browser in the response. So we are creating a cookie for this session. We are creating a session, basically, and initializing into the session storage one specific store of information for this specific session ID. We have a session storage that may store many different sessions, and every in, in our session, maybe we store the username, the user information, some temporary data, about this use so that from the session id it would be easy to extract the username for example and from the username we can quit the database for having all the extra information so uh, the session id is a random number it doesn't speak for anything but with the session id the server can get the true information about the user so it's a way for the server to store this username information somewhere where it can be retrieved easily if you know the session ID. And this is what happens on the next call. So this is a login time. Then uh, some time passes, we need to do some API and the application needs to load some data. And so at the next, uh, at every next request, for example, this is a get, uh, the browser automatically will send the same cookie a copy this is the same it's the identical one the browser doesn't need to do anything with that we just i receive it i give it back to you exactly as it was and uh, um, i'm sending the same information to the server the server received the session id first of all it will check whether it's a valid session ID, is this a session ID that I created and it's not a fake one and it's not an expired one and so on? Are you, aren't you trying to trick me? Okay, if it's a legitimate session ID, I will go to the session storage and extract some information. You know? So our username may be, may be uh, retrieved for, uh, from the session storage using the session ID. You understand if i can guess your session id i can steal all your information okay but uh, the, the the server will try to generate uh, uh, say random enough and secure enough uh, ids uh, and then with this, this information and of course with the parameters of the get uh, uh, all the queries can be done where i can use also this information about the username which is not on the get okay it's information that I'm asking to the server, get my exams. And the server knows who I am because I did the login some time ago. And I still have a cookie as an evidence to prove that I did the login some time ago. Right? Uh, of course, if this uh, any of these checks are not valid, uh, I will refuse uh, okay, to execute the API and will return a uh, 401 code, for example, saying, okay, you're not authorized for asking for this information. The important point is that here, the password is not needed anymore. We don't need it. We only need the, a valid session ID as an evidence that in the past, we provided the right password but no longer the password is not stored anywhere and is not sent many many times it's only sent once at login time then it is used it's used to create a session and is the session having a valid session in place it's the proof that some time ago i did a valid login and if i want to log out i just have to destroy this cookie i won't accept this session id anymore and then the server will behave as if you, you weren't authorized, authorized and will not be, you will not be able to ask for any further information. Okay, This is the basic uh, uh, authentication mechanism that is valid for every, time, every kind of, uh, uh, of uh, applications. Uh, even we are not working on front-end applications, but even in the old styles, uh, say, uh, client-server pattern, this mechanism was already in place. Uh, 
uh, where the session was also used for storing some application state that we are now handling inside the, inside the components. But from the uh, connection between the, the client and the server, this, this is the same uh, old uh, mechanism that uh, was in place even 10 or 20 years ago. Okay. Um, where is the session storage kept? Here, it depends. Uh, we will see that uh, for small applications, maybe they can be stored just in memory in the server or in larger uh, servers, there will be a dedicated storage, some database or some something which is just a private storage for the uh, web server to store this information. Okay, it should be configured, but it's not some information that we manage directly, it will be managed by, by the server. Okay, so this is the, the basic mechanism. What we want to do, and this is already basically set up in the in the in the HTTP protocol. No? The HTTPs and cookies are already predefined. What we need to do, of course, is to handle these operations on the server here. So we receive this information, how to check them, what to store in the session, and how to recheck them when we receive uh, uh, new, inform new information. This is our, should be our code because only we have the knowledge about uh, what which checks sh uh, should be done and uh, whether a given username and password is valid or not. And I'm talking about username and password, but uh, there are today much more complex uh, uh, um, authentication mechanisms that use uh, extra tokens and uh, complex processes. So this is just the the, the, the simplest one. Hmm. Uh, sorry, I have a question from Pietro is asking uh, if someone sniffs a packet and gets the session ID, can the server understand there is a problem or it just serves the wrong uh, client? Uh, uh, this is called the session hijacking, where I can observe a session in transit and I can replay part of the session. And the user and the server will just uh, uh, imagine that the session is legit, is the same session that is continuing. Okay, so actually this is a problem. This is why uh, we you should always use HTTPS because if you are using HTTPS, uh, this cookie information which doesn't have any information in it but it's a unique identifier is uh, if you send it through an HTTPS connection, uh, it will not be readable by a third party. Okay. So uh, there's no, uh, if someone is able to observe this exchange of information, it can just uh, uh, run a queries in your place. If you are you have it inside an HTTPS, uh, of course, uh, it will be encrypted with the certificate that this browser exchanged. So there are uh, really a lot of layers. Uh, we are in a bad situation. We need to sh share information between two parties that we don't that don't that should not trust each other. Okay, that's why it's so complex. Uh, but we are not in a security course uh, uh, to 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 uh, say solve all the details. But at least we should find a workable solution. So basically, uh, some basic guidelines to make this mechanism better: always use secure cookies and the HTTPS uh, protocol, and uh, always use the HTTP-only cookies, uh, so that only the browser knows uh, this information and this information is, uh, never leaves uh, the, uh, an encrypted connection, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, the cookie should not store some information, any information which is important. So in the cookie, we are not going to store the username because it cannot be trusted in any case. We are only storing a session ID that can only be decoded and validated by the server. Okay. But uh, even with this basic mechanism, there are a lot of creative ways for trying to get around it because we have a web page that includes a, a script from a different page that includes an iframe for another page and they can call each other and it's a mess. Okay, so if you want, uh, you can open the book and spend the next uh, 10 months uh, in understanding the different ways uh, in which uh, things can go wrong and what are the different protocols and mechanisms for uh, for uh, getting around them and for uh, for securing your applications, hmm? uh, we are we are we don't have the time for 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 doing that. Uh, we are we try to focus more on the having the sorry the application working. Hmm? Uh, but there are many problems. Some are mentioned here. Some are recognized. There are good solutions, but. Uh, there are that, those sort of uh, problems when you can make a small mistake and uh, you just forget about something that you didn't know about <laughs> and then your application becomes uh, uh, insecure. But 
let's move on and try to build something okay how to um, const construct this hmm? uh, in, in our code what tools can we use uh, what libraries can we use for for that um, this is just a summary of what happens uh, at the login time so we already know the first step we, we commented them um, this is the client work uh, filling out a form and validating the data and finally we have the post api to the login function okay so everything happens from now on the server receives the request with the, that contains probably username and password sorry um, and checks whether the user is registered and the password matches okay there's another problem here because the password should be checked by the server of course but the server should not store password in any way server should never be passwords should never be stored into a database uh, in clear repeat after me password must never be stored in a database in a clear form okay uh, there, is, there should be not even in an encrypted form there should be no way for the server to know the password that you entered no way because even if you are stealing the server, you're stealing all the data, you should not be able to recover the user passwords. Okay, never. This means that the comparison of the password should not be just a, a string comparison, but a comparison by, based on some hashing code of the previous password. So if the credentials are user and password, okay, uh, in the database of the server, we are storing uh, user and a hash function a hash function of the password not the password itself okay uh, and the login time in the post we have the user and the password the server will check uh, uh, we compute a hash for this password and we'll compare it with the hash that was stored into the database <coughs> in this way the password is just a transit information that I get. I use it for checking and then I forget it immediately. Okay. Mm, you are seeing the, more than this in your uh, security course uh, this year on, or next year hmm? about uh, how to make cryptographically sane uh, operations. I check it and uh, I send the response back to the server. I, for the, in the case of an error, I wrote here a very imprecise um, uh, 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 message, something that something is wrong with your username or your password or both. I'm not providing more details about why your login was rejected. Okay. You should never tell a user username wrong or username good but password is wrong because it, you will help them in doing some brute force attacks so um, if you have a, a, another method that just checks the username and say okay there is no username registered with this name here you are just helping a bad guy for, uh, in guessing usernames uh, and uh, at some point you will uh, confirm them uh, confirm that a username uh, a user with this username exists on the server and then you they only have to guess the password okay so uh, login is a yes or no operation if you have many pieces of information you should not tell the user which pieces of information are good uh, are valid and which are not okay uh, so the server should not disclose okay whether a given user is already available in the server or, or not of course this is nasty from the user point of view because they don't know if they mistyped the user information or they mistyped the password but it's a price that we have to pay to avoid you know bots that are trying to generate many users and many passwords um, uh, very quickly in, uh, in, in the hope let's say of getting uh, one through okay this is uh, of course uh, uh, a suggestion which is not valid on some websites where the username is uh, public for uh, maybe your email address uh, on Gmail uh, okay of course if, if somebody sent you an email and then uh, that will be your login information so uh, it's a it's a weak uh, security but uh, better than nothing okay 
at this point uh, the server generates the session id and stores the session id in the server session storage these are the steps that we saw before just listed in time okay in the in sequence the server uh, creates a cookie with uh, uh, the session id and the and the, the value the random value http only and secure okay this is something that we can we should configure on the server side uh, to generate cookies in this way and then from the browser side nothing special needs to be done because the cookie is stored automatically by the browser into its own cache and, and cookie store and then at this, at this point uh, the, the the application is handling the response that will be a 200 okay the user, the user is validated i can give you maybe some record some object with information about the user some json with all the information you need about these users and you can store them into your state um, julio the username can be guessed also when you do registration that exists and you name with that string isn't it uh, you do registration that exists when you... Uh, yeah, there are usernames which are not emails, uh, of course. Uh, you can try to do, ah, uh, yeah, you're saying, I can tr try to do a registration with a given username and the system will, will going to tell me whether the username is already taken. Yeah, yeah. That's also uh, a, a, a way of trying to guess usernames. I try to register a new user with a given string. If the string is not uh, accepted, it means that there will be some user with the name. Uh, you see, there are many holes in everything we, we do. Just for uh, user, uh, the solution for this will be to assign random usernames to every people. So your username is ABC uh, exclamation point seven seven. Uh, okay, but then people will not remember them. So we let them choose their name, and they will become easy to guess. It's a bad world we're living in. Okay. Um, a random ID is randomly generated for each session. Is ask, Lorenzo is asking? Yes, yes. It's more than randomly, basically. Okay, it's uh, generated in a way which is as as difficult as possible to guess. Okay, so it's a random plus signing plus encryption. So uh, you should have two uh, characteristics from the from the session ID. First, it should be random, difficult to guess, and second, it should be easy to recognize. So the server should be able to recognize uh, whether this session ID was mine. Did I generate it or not? So in many cases, uh, it's a random number, a, a cryptographically random number, strong, ran, ran, cryptographically strong random number, plus uh, signing, uh, cryptographical signing by the server so that it can recognize whether it was the one who uh, generated it. To, to avoid trying to receive or decode cookies generated by others. Uh, it's not tied to the password, not at all. Not at all. Okay, you can have cookies for any kind of sessions. They only are used to create a link between a browser and the server without any regard to the information that they are exchanging. Okay, if there is some extra information, this information will always be kept in a safe place inside the server in this session storage okay the session id is the key to unlock this safe place but it doesn't contain the information hmm? uh, for the same user the, yeah at every time you, you do an, a different login you close your browser you open again you will get a different cookie a different yes a different cookie with a different session id yes Okay, uh, so it doesn't have really any information in it. It's just an, a lock no? for unlocking some safe. Uh, then there are some more complex ways of using cookies. For example, when you are uh, returning to the same website, uh, the one day after, you will find maybe your your day your maybe uh, goods in the in the um, in the shopping basket. Uh, of course, the cookie as long as part, you, you, you cookies tend to have an expiration of about 20 minutes or something like that. So the day after, how can they recognize you? Well, that's because they are setting a different type of cookie, which are permanent cookies. Uh, so from the permanent cookie, they can the, the server can, but it's not a, a, a volatile storage. Uh, they will store permanent cookie into a database, but it's going more complicated. It means just a mechanism for recreating new sesh, old sessions uh, starting from scratch. It's all server side business. Okay, um, 
so from the application point of view the login operation is not particularly complex you just have to get information from a form so you'll have your controlled login form with the username and password or whatever uh, a normal uh, you know, form in, uh, in react and this form will uh, handle the login event and uh, will uh, basically okay it's a normal uh, login or submission event for a form and it will call some uh, it will do some validation of the form okay so is the uh, password or the user both valid they are valid sorry they're syntactically valid so they have the minimum number of characters uh, there are uh, the mandatory fields and so on and then we can call a, a, a callback uh, uh, that will make uh, the post request for the, to the authentication server. So we are putting together the information into a post of a JSON with, a, for example, username and password. Otherwise, this, so this, is just, this S is just local validation before uh, validation, before send information there. Uh, while here is just uh, the is the real authentication attempt. We are trying to authenticate ourselves. Uh, attempt. Is a T missing? Um, we are trying to authenticate ourselves uh, using these credentials. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, in the of course, in the mm, in the in the promise that we, when we receive back the response, we will know whether we were authenticated or not. Okay. So uh, this is on the client side. All the work is done on the server side, and the server must uh, handle a lot of uh, you know, special cases and so on. And we are suggesting to use uh, in this course a library, uh, which is called uh, Passport, which is one of the most uh, used, let's say, frequently used uh, libraries for handling this kind of stuff. Uh, it's a library for, of course, for Express. So we are most of the work is on the server side. So imagine we are in Express, we are doing our application, we, in, uh, we add uh, the Passport library uh, to Express. And what is Express is a library that uh, um, manages the main steps uh, of authentication and authorization in a flexible way, in a modular way. So they have many ways uh, of, uh, uh, of letting you check your credentials or so if I go to the password website uh, for example there is a strategies link here uh, so we'll get some some more information but if you go to the strategy just for showing you uh, each of these boxes uh, is a, a different strategy for authentication so if you want to authenticate your user using uh, I don't know the github class uh, github uh, pla uh, passwords and so you can install the passport uh, library with the password github strategy if you want to authenticate them with uh, google uh, so login with google and then we are see there will be somewhere uh, login with facebook uh, with google with twitter there are modules that you can load so you will load in your server two modules basically the passport library and one strategy library. Every library, every strategy works in a different way. Of, of course, they need different information for logging, different procedures and different exchange of information. But passport tries to make it transparent in a way so that the way in which you are using this information is the same. Uh, and it tries to hide more or less the complexity of the different uh, types of logging. We are, uh, in our example, we are going to use the simplest uh, uh, strategy, which is called uh, password local. Uh, the website says local username and password authentication strategy for password. Okay. But uh, uh, they say, they tell you that they have um, 520 strategies, the different strategies for uh, choosing how the server will check the credentials. Okay. So we are the, the basic point here is still uh, we sent the username and the password or other kinds of credential and the server must be able to tell me whether they are valid or not. And there are different mechanisms for doing that. OK. <coughs> um, <coughs> so uh, 
in a way that simplifies us because it gives us some points where the checks happen, where the authentication checks happen, some other parts where the uh, authorization check happens. And uh, the bad, this is the good thing about passwords. It's very flexible and basically it's, it's complete because it does what you need to do. The, the wrong part and the bad points is that it's uh, documentation is very, very bad. So if you try to read the documentation, probably you don't understand anything because there are some examples that say, okay, you can do this in this way or in that other way, but okay, from examples, you, this is difficult to learn the, uh, the concepts and learn what it can be done in different ways. And also the documentation for the single functions is very, very minimal. So it's a bit hard of getting some you know, uh, proficiency with this library and understanding exactly what should be done uh, at every moment. We try to walk uh, together, okay, through through these steps, uh, and and try to see the the main, uh, the most imp say uh, uh, important information, uh, just for I say for the exam, for your work, and for the lab. Uh, we are going to share today. We are doing some little examples together, of, of course, uh, but uh, then we are going to share as usual in the React course uh, um, project on GitHub. Uh, both the client and the server with that you will use the uh, authentication with password so you can say also uh, look and steal and copy that code uh, because basically all with the same code but it needs uh, uh, say it requires many steps as we, are, as we are going to see okay so we will give you the, the example so that you can basically try to copy it and adapt to your your exam projects uh, without uh, getting crazy behind the, the passport uh, uh, documentation. OK, so we are in the server in, in Express. And uh, uh, we must uh, do some configuration stuff for enabling the Express application to do all the checks that we need. So first of all, we need to choose uh, the authentication strategy. And that's easy. We choose to use the local strategy. OK, so we choose uh, local. And we must set it up. Setting up the so configuring the behavior of this strategy. Of course, username and password. Okay, good. But what is the database? What what's the query? What's the hashing function? This is something that needs to be done. Okay, password doesn't doesn't know that. Password is able to handle all the generation of the cookies, checking of the cookies, the session, and so on, but not the, the endpoint where we are you are actually doing the query on, on the database. So there's a setup step, and this will be uh, will say define uh, some default behavior of the password library. Then we can then associate to some routes in our Express applications uh, in the form of, of middlewares. Okay, so uh, we can then create. A, remember middleware in uh, in uh, in Express. There are some functions that get called before the real um, uh, request is processed by by your route code, and so they can do some pre-checks of of your um, or, or pre-computing or management of your uh, request. So we will have some middleware for doing the authorization, okay, uh, for checking the cookie, for checking the validity of the session, and so on, and and for for generating the cookies and so on. So we need to configure a bit of some middleware functions in our application. Uh, some just for handling the sessions and some other for handling the passport, uh, um, let's say, authenticated session. <clears throat> and so this is just uh, all infrastructure, basically. The library that we need needs to be configured in the, in the same way. And the third step uh, would be uh, actually storing the user information into the session. Okay. Uh, at login time, we have all the user information, but then we need to store it into the session. Um, the session doesn't contain objects, but it contains strings, uh, so it needs some uh, some uh, some extra work uh, to to store your information and to let Passport retrieve the information about the user. Okay, we're trying to see and walk through these three different steps. Uh, in the next minute. So I maybe uh, let's see the first one right now and then we have a break for, for the others. OK. Um, so local strategy is the strategy we chose. 
it's uh, it's in it's in a different module. It's called uh, password local. You see that we are requiring an extra module, password local, that needs to be installed in our project, of course. And uh, uh, and passport is the object that, that uh, say contains the passport library itself. Uh, the local strategy assumes uh, that the validation is done with uh, by, by providing a username and a matching uh, passport, uh, password. So we have this uh, uh, password is also is similar to the Express application in that it can it has some a use method where we can associate uh, different be uh, extra behaviors uh, uh, to passport itself. And in this case, we are setting, uh, let me make it a, a bit larger. Uh, we are setting, uh, uh, we are saying to password to use a strategy of type local strategy. In this case, uh, we are creating a new strategy. Okay. Uh, local strategy is a variable of, is a, extracted from the strategy property of the module, but that's just variables. Uh, what so we are remember what we said before we choose a strategy okay this is this one and we configure it configuring the the strategy means giving a callback function which is a verify function so we are saying we want to use a username and password and this is the function that will tell you whether the username and password are correct or not so this function that we need to write uh, receives a username that came from the request, a password that came from the request, and uh, done is a, with a, a, a callback. So, passport will, uh, whenever it needs to authenticate a session, will call this function, this verification callback. And this verification callback will do some checks, uh, and uh, finally, will call a second callback which is co which is done which is the third parameter of the function okay so we do some checks and then return the information about whether uh, the checks were successful or not the checks are totally our own code we know we must decide how to check them and you see, for example, here I said the example of a get user method inside our DAO classes. So we are need we need to do something with the database, okay? Um, and we'll get some uh, the user object uh, corresponding to a given username, and we try to check whether it's valid or not. This is uh, our logic, okay? Passport doesn't help us with uh, the database checks or with the encryption of the of the password and so on. Okay, uh, we have a method of saying, okay, this username and password pair are valid or not. And we uh, tell this information by calling done. And done can be called in four different ways. Uh, I can kill the people who thought about this, uh, but uh, never mind. Uh, you, so if the first parameter of done is null, it means that there were no errors. If the first parameter is an object, then that object should contain some error, okay? But Passport is telling you that uh, having, um, so the authentication was done without errors, and then it may be successful or unsuccessful or error so there are three types of results okay no error okay means the username and password was right were right and so this user is logged in i will tell it by calling done with a null parameter and a, an object a user object an object that contains information about the user Okay, I decide what kind of information I want to have. 
okay? So maybe the user will contain the password, may contain the ID, may contain, uh, I don't know, the course or whatever. Information about the user I can retrieve from the uh, database. You see that user here is coming from the DAO call, so it's our code, and uh, we are just uh, uh, passing back the, uh, to the, we return it, say, okay, with this credential, these credentials are correct, and this is the object that describes information about this user. It may be just as simple as storing the username or the ID. It doesn't matter. If this object exists, then it means that the password was correct. If the password was not correct, you should send false as a second parameter. So always null as the first parameter because everything went right from the server point of view, but the password was wrong or the user were wrong. So uh, for rejecting a login, you return a false as a second argument. Maybe if you want, you may have a third argument with some explanation. Uh, so the error is uh, should uh, be used for cases where you could not perform the validation. Maybe some database error, some connection error, or something like that. And so you cannot, uh, uh, you, you are not saying whether the validation was right or wrong, but you just you couldn't do it. Okay. So a valid uh, verification is a verification that. Uh, may have valid credential or invalid credential. So the login will be successful or wrong, but in the old, old cases, uh, it's, uh, say, it's a, a legitimate call. And so we return with, with no error, but with some information about, OK, this is the authenticated user, or there is no authenticated user. Uh, and the other case, so we have basically three, three, three types of, of results to give. Okay, so you see that, for example, if the user was not found or was not found correctly, then we are still returning null. Uh, so the, the, we have no error, but uh, the user is not found, was not found. Okay, and we are returning some message, some error message. In this code, we don't have the 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 other call of error that sh could do, could go into a catch. Okay, uh, branch. So. We are doing this uh, DAO call. If there are some exceptions, we can catch the exception. And at this point, uh, uh, call some error conclusion of of the of the um, of this uh, of this verification callback. Okay, so we have two levels of callbacks. One is the verification callback, our function. Other, the other is the done callback, which we must call. And this verification. <clears throat> Um, callback receives, uh, as we mentioned, username and password. Where does it get them from? Uh, username and password are automatically extracted from two fields, uh, which are called username and password, in the request body, in the body of the request, basically. So uh, the local strategy assumes that in your request body, you have two properties called username and password. Password, sorry. You can also customize them as it's a, it's a, it's a detail. So you are responsible for storing this information into the request body, for example, through the, uh, for example, with the JSON parser. Hmm? Uh, we already know that the body of the request is empty until there is some parsing logic uh, that reads uh, JSON and creates properties or reads uh, URL encoded uh, information and stores it then. So you are responsible, we are responsible for filling the request body with the required information. And then Passport will be automatically extracting these fields and passing them to this function. Okay. Uh, the request Anna is sent in clear, yes. Uh, that's why we should really, in the real world, we should always use uh, HTTPS. Hmm? Because the request body is, of course, uh, uh, just contains a JSON object with the password in clear with the, with this local strategy. So username and passport, the password, the password will be entered in clear in the form 
and uh, uh, stored into the JSON uh, in clear and we send to the server. So un unless we are using an, an HTTPS connection, this first call is very uh, sensitive because we, we, everybody could read the, the information in transit. Hmm? Uh, you could uh, imagine some nobody prevents you from encrypting you know, in some way this password so don't send it in clear and then of course when you're trying to validate it will take into account this kind of encryption if you want or hey uh, yes or um, but uh, it will make things more complex and as the general rule if you are worried about that about this level of security use a more complex authentication scheme use uh, you know google authentication or open id or oauth uh, which are more complex authentication schemes uh, where the password is never sent through but because there will be an exchange of tokens so they are using other strategies so uh, rather than trying to complicate this very basic strategy you should try to move to another strategy where some other people who are cleverer than us from the security point of view uh, already now prepare the, all the all the protocol all the exchange protocols here we are assuming that okay uh, the the channel is secure either just because we are, because we are just playing we are just testing or in production always use https okay there is no excuse uh, not to use https in production it's uh, but yes, uh, this is uh, a point where the password is exposed. Needs to go to the server because the server should need to to compute the hash and then compare the hashes. But for computing the hash, you need the password, the, the, the real pass password. You cannot compute the hash on the client because otherwise uh, it will be easier to get. You just need to replay the hash and uh, uh, and you uh, can impersonate another user. So there are a lot of of corner uh, of dangerous corners here so the password is sent in clear uh, but we should never store it in clear okay and so usually we use some hashing techniques uh, where in the database uh, we store not the password but a hash code that is computed from the password hmm? um, there are again uh, many techniques for doing that passport doesn't help us okay they don't do anything about this because this is a database representation choice um, one simple way of doing that with express uh, is using the bcrypt method that uh, will take a passport and generate a string like this uh, uh with the uh, what which is something which is derived from the password and cannot be reversed so it's not uh, it's not at all possible to uh, to the, to know which were the previous password so if i writing a very difficult passport like one two three four five six and uh, uh, i use the website it will tell me that the hash code one hash code of this fun of this password could be this one so when the user will will register in our website when you are signing up a new a new user the user will provide a passport and in the database we are going to store this code by the way this is not a unique code because if you try to recompute it with the same passport you will get a different hash every time because there's also a, um, a random and a timing uh, uh, issue there and so that every time, even, even if you have three users which have the same passport, you cannot tell from the database because the hashes will be different in any case, even if the password is the same. Okay, so uh, it's, some, it's a string like this that will be stored into the database. And uh, we can uh, use, a, there's a package, uh, bcrypt, that we can import in Express that is able to, <clears throat> to compute these hashes and then we can do uh, the comparison, okay? So basically this bcrypt module has a couple of methods that we may use. Uh, the most important is the compare method, okay? It will compare a passport, which is in clear, with a hash that has been stored into the database. So we retrieve from the database the hash corresponding to the username and we ask bcrypt to compare the clear text password uh, with, the, with the hash and will tell us 
true or false, whether it matches or not. Uh, if we want to create new password hashes, uh, we can use the hash method uh, by taking a passport, uh, password and uh, a number. You see, we already have it here. Uh, the rounds because it's an iterative process. Uh, the more you iterate it, the more say ra um, random information, the more entropy you put, you put there, you put in, and so the more difficult uh, it becomes to to invert this function. Um, but uh, as you see, be since the hashes are always different, okay, you cannot uh, take a passport comp compute the hash and then compare the hashes because the same passport will have uh, the same password will have different hashes at different times okay so you cannot just do a comparison of the hashes you must use the compare method uh, and then uh, it will take care of, of checking the, the validity of uh, of the hash compared to this password uh, by, by the way, bcrypt has different uh, sub algorithms, uh, sub ways, different ways of computing that. Uh, and there are the first four characters, uh, like this four one, that uh, define which uh, algorithm were used, was used uh, for creating that hash. Okay. Um, the, mo the bcrypt module uh, supports uh, well the hashes uh, of type 2a and 2b. Don't ask me what they mean. Okay. But uh, around you find other hashes with other prefixes uh, that are something like 2x and 2y. Uh, if you find uh, uh, they should be more or less com compatible. So if uh, uh, you find a, a website that will generate a hash with 2x, uh, you can replace with 2b uh, that this should be matched. But uh, this website, so we are not using the, the sign up. Um, we are not implementing the sign up functionality. So what we are doing it will be to uh, store directly into the database uh, some uh, ashes okay, that we can create by hand on this website. This website will generate uh, two A ashes, and so there's not a problem. If you are trying to generate uh, bcrypt ashes in, with some other method, just be aware that if it's two A and two B, uh, you can use them as they are, and they are compatible with uh, with bcrypt. If they are two X and two Y. Uh, you can probably replace the one with to be just uh, modifying one character and they should work hmm? should uh, in other cases uh, we are not uh, the, the, the bcrypt module is not able to to, to check them hmm? um, okay so what we are going to do here you remember that we called the, the get user method from the DAO hmm? some time ago in the two or three slides ago here, we said, okay, uh, password is calling this function and uh, we must check the database at this point. With what? With the username information and the password also, I guess. Yes. So uh, actually the signature of this method is a, is a bit different from the other one. Sorry, it's not... Uh, uh, email and password. So actually here, yes, not username, but it's also username and password. Okay. Uh, so the DAO method, get user, uh, receives uh, email and passport, password. We'll try to receive, uh, uh, to select from the user table, that user with a matching email or username, depends on whether you're using just strings or email addresses as usernames. Uh, we retrieve this line and we may have uh, uh, different cases. Uh, the f okay, we may have some error. So we reject the promise uh, and it, we need, it will need to be catched uh, at, the, at the upper level. There are some database errors. Or there is no database error, but I gave, uh, that I have no results. This means that the user doesn't exist. So the authentication is fa uh, failed. It's not an error, so I don't reject the promise, I resolve it, so I return a valid value with false. So in this case, user will be false. Otherwise, we have a row with an ID, an email, and a, and a pass, pass, password. 
the password will contain the hash and uh, here and the hash will be compared with our clear text password that we received from the passport callback so we have a user so the user exists we don't we still don't know about uh, the, whether the password is good or not we can use bcrypt to compare it con compare them and uh, this uh, compare returns a promise so you need to do that uh, asynchronously and uh, i don't know why but uh, it returns a promise uh, and uh, in this case uh, if the result is okay then this username is valid because the password did match and so we can resolve uh, with this user information otherwise uh, there's a mistake here we should resolve with false okay because the uh, the same that we did there here and there the user doesn't exist or the user exists but the password doesn't match in both cases uh, are not uh, uh, a not valid authentication and so we should return false uh, and this false value here will go here user will be false and so we return an error message otherwise we are returning user which is an object that we created here with some information the id for example the email okay the email was already known but uh, we are putting that into an object that will remember will be remembered into the into the server application okay uh, okay this is the first step okay what we did do we, st we still didn't write any route in express we just configured our strategy we use a, a passport we create a new local strategy the local strategy needs a verification callback so we must write the verification callback the verification callback needs uh, uh, to be able to check the username and password so we need a, a method for checking them doing the query and a method for doing the the let's say the hash comparison all of this in our code is just the beginning you see it's just passport.use we are telling passport what kind of authentication we want to do by giving the callbacks that it it will call at the right time okay and then of course we need to see how to call them in our application so this is just all let's say configuration time we are telling them uh, what kind of information we need to do i um just before before breaking i we published a, a, a project um, week 12 uh, this morning uh, where we have a, a very a, a smaller version of the react scores something that is only, we deleted a lot of functionality that's only just showing the the, uh, the list of exams uh, we doesn't uh, just to, to make to focus it uh, on the authentication part that we are going to add and to see how, how they can be added so it's a mini, a minimal version of the real scores. Uh, just to show you, in the database, we added. Uh, Where's the open database? Yeah. We added one table, which is a user table that contains uh, information about uh, two example users. So one is called uh, student, and the other is called text, with ID one and two. And with some password ashes and some say visible name okay these password ashes are in this case they are identical it's not a good choice because we just did some cut and paste and we enter this information by hand in this table so we didn't implement any uh, say login uh, sign up uh, method okay so this will be the table with the id email and passport password that could be compatible with the code that we saw in, in the slides um, <coughs> sorry uh, the other modification that we did to the database is of course uh, uh, adding to the exam table uh, a column with the user id so this is these are the exams passed by user number one 
and there could be some other exam passed by user number two and so in the when the session is authenticated with the user id i can select the subset of exams that are for that specific user so we have to modify to add the user table and add in the specific tables the reference to the user when, when it's needed okay um, and then we will try to to see how to modify this project with the with the authentication uh, in the next hour so if you want to clone this and try to follow along uh, we'll try to implement these steps uh, also in this project. I think that we deserve a break now. If there are any, if there aren't any any questions at the moment, okay. So we can have uh, a break until uh, let's say it's 25. Let's say until 10:35. Hmm, 10 minutes, 10 full minutes, or 11. Okay, so see you in 10 minutes then. Thank you.